both global leveling and line-wise leveling and the higher order versions rely on the image having an even spatial distribution of C values. In the line-wise case, it is additionally required that all lines have the same coarse structure. If this is not the case, it will lead to artifacts. Let's see how. In this example, we see what happens when performing global leveling on a step surface. Obviously not good. And in this example, we see what happens when applying the line-wise leveling on a surface with structures which are aligned in X and Y. Also not so good. The scan lines do not all have the same coil structure, because the average height of scan lines containing the bumps is different from the mean height of the other lines which just contain the background, we get a banded result when performing line-wise correction. The easiest way to avoid these artifacts is to use height masking if that is possible. Otherwise, we will use area of interest masking tools. Let us repeat the two cases from before using height masking. Mask part of the image simply by dragging the color clip markers found on the right side of the color scale. Drag the upper color clip marker down to mask high values and drag the lower color clip marker up to mask the low values. It is very useful to study the height distribution histogram while doing this. Now that we have masked the higher values, let us do the global leveling. See, much better. Let us do the same for line-wise leveling. The tilt in this image is so large that it is not possible to mask all the small bumps at the same time without also masking part of the background. Therefore, we first perform a global leveling. Now we can drag the upper color clip marker down so that all bumps are masked. And then apply the line-wise leveling. I find the height thresholding method very powerful, especially if used iteratively a couple of times. To help speed up work, SPIP can do this automatically with its automatic outlier rejection options. Let's go back to where we started with this image. Then we select the line-wise correction option in the automatic outlier rejection group in the plane correction quick launch menu. Look, just as good as the manual job we did previously. A second way of masking features in the image before plane correction is by using Area of Interest markers, or in short, AOIs. The Area of Interest tools are found in the General ribbon and on the right-click menu. The AOI markers can either be inclusive or exclusive. Let us use the step height example from before and draw a rectangular AOI marker on one of the terraces. and then apply global leveling. Now we can delete the AOI marker. We get a perfect result because only the image area inside the AOI is used to estimate the plane being subtracted from the image. Instead we could also have used an inverted or exclusive AOI marker to mask the other terrace. Let's first undo what we did. Then we draw the inverted AY. And push the global leveling option. It is also possible to use multiple AY markers for example for three-point leveling. 
again we'll undo. Then we'll draw three small AOI markers and finally apply global leveling and delete the markers again. Combination of AOI markers can be saved and reloaded directly from the ribbon and even as a part of automatic batch processing. Now, before ending this video, just a few words about the plane correction dialog. It is opened from the launch button in the plane correction panel or from the quick launch drop-down. The plane correction dialog offers a large number of options of which only a few have been mentioned so far, namely simple first order global correction, zeroth and first order line-wise correction, zero background offsetting which is here called bearing height to zero and then of course the automatic outlier rejection option. Any combination of chosen options can be applied to an image directly from the dialog or it can be saved in a settings file and used directly from the quick launch button in the ribbon. In fact, the built-in settings used so far are simply a collection of settings most commonly used. By opening them in the plane correction dialog, one can inspect the combination of options in each saved settings file. Thanks for watching this video. Even though we have here covered some advanced issues, there is still much more plain correction options for you to explore in SPIP, all described in the help function.